Ryan Trasher is on, uh, the uh, vice president of the Cajun Navy, the United Cajun Navy. Brian, thank you for everything you guys are doing. You are absolute heroes. Glenn, thanks so much for having us. And uh, really, we just want to take a minute to thank you and uh, JP and the team over at Mercury One for the tremendous support and generosity they've been giving us throughout this deployment in North Carolina. And uh, we hope to continue to keep working together yeah, in likewise. Florida. So thank you so much from the you bottom bet. of our hearts. Everybody, thanks you, Glenn. Um, I want to thank, please, it's the audience, it's not me. Um, right. Please uh, uh, don't let me forget before we go to talk about Florida and what we have to do in Florida. But first, sure. can you can you talk to me uh, are supplies meant for Hurricane Helene? Are they purposely being thwarted? And what happened with the helicopter? So, you know, I think I made the mistake of of asking for new conspiracy theories for Christmas because all the ones I got last year came true. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, you know, we we were we were on the ground pretty early in Florida. You know, we always say that that. People have to understand that FEMA and the National Guard are not first responders. They're second responders. Amen. And the first responders locally, the local first responders, are also victims, so they're not always fully up to speed. So that's why we put first shrimp boots on the ground and get to work right away. The good thing about the United Cajun Navy is that we don't have to ask our lawyers for permission to do anything. We just ask them to show up to the bond hearing later, and we'll deal with it. So anyhow, um, when we first got down there, we were hearing reports about people getting uh, getting stopped and, and getting, you know, impeding the relief efforts. It didn't happen to us. You know, we, we have an existing relationship with FEMA and the Red Cross and a lot of agencies, so they know who we are. Um, and so we weren't really experiencing it like other people were. We were getting reports of it for sure. Um, but then we were we started getting frantic calls and texts and pictures and stuff sent to us from our volunteers over at that site saying, you know, what in hell's happening? This, you know, they, they said that the, the, this Blackhawk did a low pass, like he was going to land, and they started giving him the, the X signs with their arms saying, you know, it's a no-land zone, and uh, he kept coming down. And, you know, look, I, I wasn't there myself, but I've watched the video a bunch of times. I am a pilot. I'm a fixed-wing pilot, not helicopter. But it does look to me like, first of all, he, uh, he was flying too low. FAA says you have to stay 500 feet over any structure or person. Um, that's just a day one rule. But... Um, it looks like he does a, a left bank and then aft pitch, which increased, in my opinion, the strength of the rotary wash that you saw blowing all the materials in the tent everywhere. And then he pitched forward and took off. So I really don't, you know, it, everybody's been sending us information on the aircraft. They, they're saying, you know, I don't want to say like, because we don't know for sure, but they think they know who it belongs to and where it came from. Nobody knows, including myself, what the intent was. Some people are telling me, oh, the pilot just lost his situational awareness and made a mistake. I'm like, listen, Blackhawk pilots are the top guns of the rotary wing. The, the only Blackhawk pilots that make mistakes are the dead ones. You know, I mean, these guys right. are some of the best helicopter pilots in the world. Um, seems like either we had just like a rogue hot shot or they were trying to send some kind of message. I hate to go down that rabbit hole, but I mean, you, you everybody's seen the video now. Like, I'm happy to hear what anybody thinks. So do I? I know somebody who has a Black Hawk. Um, believe it or not, um, I didn't know you could buy them, but you can strip down. Right. Apparently, um, do we know if this was private? At least that was okay. So my first instinct was like, because you're right. If you got money, you can buy. Well, you got money, you could buy anything, right? right. Um, you can rent a congressman pretty cheap these days, even with inflation. <laughs> so, but, but somebody, um, one of our, one of our followers, like, got, you know, was really good with video and they were able to like kind of close up on it and see the two pilots in the cockpit. It takes two people to fly Blackhawk. And they said they were wearing standard DOD headgear. Um, the, the, the aircraft does, if we think we've identified the right one does appear to be, um, does appear to be registered to the military. Um, it, it was not armed. So I thought maybe it was, it belonged to an agency. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, there's so many possibilities. And there was no marking on it. Not you, that, not that I'm aware of. We've, we've looked at everything um, that we could, as far as with the video and pictures available. I mean, that's illegal, isn't it? We just don't. Yeah. We just didn't see any. Huh? So people have been using flight tracker and things like that to see who was flying, flying missions in that area 
And, uh, you know, again, it, they've come up with a few possibilities. We're trying not to jump the gun. And also, even if it, let's say it was, you know, military, like the last thing I want people doing is going and trying to find out who the pilots were and start harassing them and all that. You know, I don't want any of that. Yeah, no, I, and I just said on the air, um, anybody who is threatening uh, any government official is a problem and it should, it should stop. Uh, however, you know, standing there in a place like you're at now, I assume you're at our, our base camp there by the Harley Davidson dealer. Um, yeah. Adam Smith, one of the baddest dudes in North Carolina. Yeah. At and, the Harley Davidson dealer. Sure. And he has politely told them go away um, because we have a system down and it's been working uh, and it's saved a lot of lives and you can go do your thing, but you're not shutting us down. Um, there's no problem with saying thank you, but no thank you, as we are the first responders. But you cannot take it out on the, the people. Uh, you, no. you can't. Please be kind. And, if, if you, and, if, and I'll tell you, Glenn, we, the, just so happened that the week before Helene hit, we had some pre-scheduled meetings in D.C., and one of those meetings was at FEMA, and so they had us up into the in- Incident Command Center, uh, which is like their war room, and um, and they had just done a level one activation, and and they were watching Helene and making talking to all the local emergency managers and making plans. And I I did not meet anybody in the entire building when I was at FEMA that was not a passionate, dedicated person that cares about their job and cares about helping people in trouble. So FEMA is as a as a as a entity seems like it's you know like just another F word. And you can say what you want about the leadership of FEMA and the political mm-hmm. appointees, but but the people on the ground, and, and there are people on the ground in North Carolina have been since since I I got there. Um, but yeah, don't don't be ugly to those people. They're right. just employees. Their job is to do this, and and they do care about it. Yeah. Um, by the way, I don't know how they can say that they've got this covered. As of Monday, yesterday. Only 9% of FEMA's personnel, or 1,200 people, were available to respond to the hurricane or other disasters. They are having a hard time. They don't. They say this is the busiest year in the past decade, um, and the staffing reserves at this point were 19%. Um, that is obviously not good, uh, and they are... They're having a difficult time getting people uh, in to help. So I don't know how the government can have it both ways. By the way, this is coming from the New York Times. Um, I don't know how they can have it both ways. Look, we don't, you know, we don't need help. And, uh, you know, we're here to take over. And then at the same time, be short people, especially with Milton on its way. Right. And, you know, it's worse than having being short people and this is something that was you know intimated to me from some you know fema management people that obviously uh won't be named but it's not just not having enough bodies glenn they're more experienced staff are elsewhere and you know where i'm talking about and and so it's like they have people but they're kind of fairly new hires still carrying around their employee handbook trying to figure out what's going on so uh they've requested to their credit these these people have requested from their higher ups to bring in some of these more senior experienced people. And, uh, my, my understanding is that, that that hasn't happened yet. Uh, I, uh, I can't thank you and every single veteran that is on the ground. Uh, I mean, the American people are really good people. Um, but we don't have the experience per se that you guys do the veterans and especially special forces guys, you guys sprung into action and set these systems up uh, like only really military can do. You just you had what you had and you made good with that and you set it up and you organized. And I, I think you made the difference between life and death with a lot of people. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and just to be clear, I myself am not a military veteran, um, but I'm a pilot. I'm a boat captain. I'm a diver. Um, I just did all these types of, of skill sets yeah. on my own and it turned out to be useful, but yeah, you're right. We have a ton of veterans and they do make the best volunteers. Um, and, uh, they, they just, 
you can't freak them out. You, you can't make them, I know. You, know, you can't make them woozy. I know. Um, they, they can handle anything. And I think one of the other things that helped us out as an organization with regards to, you know, local or locals or federal officials trying to stop relief efforts is that we put it out there very early that anybody getting in our way, we're offering an all expense paid free swamp tour back in Louisiana. So <laughs> sign up, please. <laughs> Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Let, let, before you go, talk to me about Milton. Uh, we are. So Milton is, uh, you know, one of the lowest center of pressure in terms of millibars that we've seen in the last century. We have our own meteorologists on staff at United Cajun Navy that are making sure that we're putting out accurate information. Um, and it's it's bearing down the and NHC track is looking to stay right in that that Tampa area. Um, unfortunately, it's going to hit as a very strong hurricane. We are pre-positioned. We have assets in Destin and Ocala, and we're moving more into the area. We're going to have boat assets, supplies, and air assets, just like we did in North Carolina. So nobody has to worry about whether we're coming. We're already there, and uh, we're going to help as many people as you can. The good thing about Florida is you, they do such a good job with these hurricanes as a state that usually we're just there for like maybe a few days or a week handling right. the life-threatening emergency stuff. And then the, the, the state comes in and, and starts running their, their show and, and it's, you know, they take over and they, they, they have a tremendous snapback game. Yeah. Ron DeSantis is absolutely incredible. Just incredible yeah. with the yeah. Everybody should have a Navy SEAL as a governor. I mean, we love Jeff yeah. Landry. Don't, don't get me wrong. He's a bad dude, but, yeah. but uh, Ron, <laughs> Ron's on another level. Uh, Brian, is there anything you need uh, in help? If anybody wants to uh, find out more about us, we're on all the socials, United Cajun Navy. Our website is unitedcajunnavy.org. Sign up to volunteer, donate. We always say uh, time, talent, treasure. If you got the time to give, the talent to offer, or the treasure to donate, we appreciate it all. One thing everybody can do for free is go to our social media posts and share them. That helps us grow and uh, grow our mission, as, is, uh, as does Mercury One and all your listeners. So, again, thank you so much. We are very yeah. grateful. Thank you, Brian. We, uh, Thanks, we're man. glad to partner with you. Thank you. Um, Brian Trasher from um, the uh, Cajun Navy. He's the he's vice awesome. president. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> awesome and very funny. These guys yeah, are, yeah. I mean, you know, they've been through these things over and over again. And like he said, you know, they're just unflappable. Uh, and there's nothing better in an emergency than have a group of people that are just like, we got it. Don't worry. We got it. Uh, especially when they're grappling down from a helicopter as they were <laughs> over the uh, over the uh, mountains and, you know, pulling people up in the helicopter. When I when I saw Corey Mills do that, I'm like, what? Who does? Well, I mean, you do that, but. I don't ever want to do that. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want somebody to have to pick me up like that. You know, tie. Oh, I'm just going to tie a rope around you. Then we're going to just head on up. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. All right. More in just a second. Uh, by the way, you can help. MercuryOne.org. Now with Milton on the way, we really need to pull together um, and know that we will be there for you. Uh, that is kind of the thing that you learn if you're a farmer or you live in a small town. When the neighbor's farm has trouble, you go over and help because you know at some point you're going to have problems and, uh, and they'll have to help you. So it's, it's not transactional, but it, it's required that we all help each other. Um, we're the first responders, not the government. Let me go to uh, Dallas. Uh, and uh, uh, Dallas is, <laughs> I just looked up, I thought it was Dallas, Texas, but Dallas is his name. He is from Texas. Hi, Dallas. Hey, how are you, Glenn? Hey, good. Uh, long, long time uh, listener, first time caller. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I'm an, a, a retired Army aviation major, and yes. I've got more than 1,200 in Black Hawk, 1,200 hours in Black Hawks, and a couple hundred hours in Chinooks. Oh, good. And after, and after hearing your conversation, uh, I went to look at the videos of of that of the Black Hawk dusting off your right. supply area, and. Having done something very similar myself more than once, uh, mm-hmm. it is. Uh, I don't think it was on purpose. I Good. think it looked. It looked to me that as soon as they realized what they were doing, they were pulling away. And I've seen more stuff than I can tell you blown over, including a one of my soldiers was blown over by an Apache. I mean, actually sent him tumbling. Um, many years ago in Korea, Lieutenant and I were flying a Hawk, and. 
we were tactically flying the riverbeds, and it just so happened it was also the vacation season in Korea, and the Koreans set up these canopies and easy ups on the river and, oh, and float in the water. And we were following the riverbed, not going real fast. And I thought I was high enough until I looked out and I saw canopies tumbling and flying every oh, which yeah. direction. You were popular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was real popular. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. Um, well, I'm glad to hear that. And, and I hope you don't think that we accused because we said we didn't know. We'd like to know who owned the helicopter, who, you know, it didn't have a tail number on it. Um, and so who who was it? And just to not take it out on the pilots or even the service, but just to ask the questions, what happened there? What happened there? I, I can't tell whether that's a civilian owned, owned hawk or, or right. whether it's it's a government hawk. No, um, neither can we. There's a lot of agencies that have them. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, also at Fort Hood, I um, I got accused of flying over a neighborhood while I was at my house having a lunch. Right. And I actually looked out and saw the, the Black Hawk. And I don't know if it was a customs or, or who it was, but mm-hmm. after they found out that I was actually at my house and not flying, um, I, I got I got redeemed on that one. But but no, if, if they had wanted to really cause some um, damage, so cause some damage, they, yeah. they would have they would have come in a lot lower. Yeah. And it looked to me like as soon as they realized, oh, crap, um, you know, That's we're good. blowing. And it was it was light stuff um, from, from looking at the, yeah. at the picture at the yeah. video. So I, I really, in my heart of hearts, I, I don't think it was done on purpose. I am glad to hear that, Dallas. Thank you so much. 